Good evening and welcome again to another episode from me, the Harry Carrier. But today we're going to step in a completely new office. We are here at Senaki Kulki in a new aircraft that will be a small part of a series of episodes that we will do. And this will be the drum roll while the uh, C-130 turns to taxi to the runway. This will be the FA-18 Hornet, made by Eco Dynamics, and I apologize for the engine noise. Uh, in collaboration with Belsen Tech, and uh, some assistance are going. But here we have the FA-18 C Lot 20 uh, as currently used. I think this is an area era-wise, it's about 2005 version of Hornet. And this spotting will flying machine will be, of course, part, uh, part of a dedicated series of episodes alongside the Harrier and 15. So, as a first example, well, after we do a nice walk around, around the bird, as you can see, it's uh, in the livery of the Werewolf Squadron of the US Marine Corps. Let's step into my new office. And here we are in the cockpit. Well, does this look familiar? Well, I guess it does. Uh, it's very similar to that of the Harrier in the sense that we have two multifunctional color control displays, but they're not. They're called digital, dynamic digital indicators, DDIs. We have a full color uh, DDI down here. And the cockpit is pretty much similar with most military aircraft. There's a right, left console, left vertical, central control panel, right vertical, right console. We have a flight stick here in the middle, and we're going to go into through this episode through the startup procedure. Well, that AC, uh, that C-130 is definitely off somewhere, and he's being quite noisy as usual. But well. I'm trying to make this mission a bit more dynamic and add more elements to it, such as making this airfield uh, itself more, uh, more dynamic. I apologize if it lags, uh, it does this sometimes. But without further ado, I have grabbed here the Early Access FA-18C Reference Manual provided by Eagle Dynamics. If you purchase this module, I will provide links in, be uh, links in below. Uh, it contains everything you need to do, deal with with the early version of this aircraft. Now, my, I have flown this a little bit around, I have taken some screenshots, you might have seen them on my Facebook page if you know who I am. However, um, it feels like a very complete aircraft despite some missing features which will be added later by Eagle Dynamics. And yeah, that is to it. So, to compare this to the startup procedure from the MiG-15, well, this is a bit more involved, more complicated, but it's not exactly difficult. It's, I would rate it personally between the difficulty of the ATMC and startup-wise and the Harrier. The Harrier being the simplest, ATMC being the hardest, this should be the, about in the middle. So, of course, what we need to, to do is we need electrical power. Here we have the battery button. So we will put this on. We can see here we have 27 volts and we have these advisory lights coming on. All right, then we move to the left console and we need to perform the test for fire and engine fire and APU fire and also the bleed air. So. Engine fire left. Engine fire left. Engine fire right. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. All right. Now we're gonna test the other circuit. Let's reset the tape. We turn the batteries off and back on. Engine fire left. Engine fire left. Engine fire right. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. Now, as you can see, this uh, annunciator basically has performed these 
sound tests for our system, so let's set the master quotient as well. And we can proceed with start start our procedure. Now this plane comes with an APU. If you remember, I have mentioned before, it's an auxiliary power unit which will provide air and electricity for the plane to start. So the first step, we're going to turn this APU on. You, you can hear a jet engine powering up. What the APU is, is basically a very small jet engine. When it is ready, we have here a light that will come on and tell us that the APU is ready. Perfect. Now, on the next step, we are going to crank the right engine. And we're going to watch this EFA indicator, which is a term of fuel and engine indicator. And when it reaches about 25% and 1, we're going to crank it up. As you can see, the engine is powering up, it's at 37%. There we go, it's lower than canopy anyway, it's going to get quite noisy. The engine's up at 66%. It's going to start spooling down a little right, bit. Right, right. And you can hear the advisory Flight lights controls. there. Yep. Flight controls. And we'll kill the mass of caution. Now we have here the indicator lights. Well, you've seen them earlier while on battery power. If you remember the MiG, we had the lights for the landing gear. So we have here the light for the flaps and main landing gear and nose landing gear. Now, uh, we have started up the engine, so we're going to move to test the advisory lights, which the test is here. Okay, which seems funny. Now let's turn on the DDIs for day. One, two. And this will come just increase the brightness. Now we're going to put up the HUD symbology. Now, on the left panel, uh, we're going to choose, we're going to zoom in, I don't really see that well, and we're going to choose FCS here. We have a representation here of our uh, flight control surfaces, and here we're going to go to menu, and we have the bit, so built-in tests. Now, the next thing we need to do is fire up our comp system as well. And let's see, our airfield has controlled our frequencies, but I don't know them off the top of my head. So ATC is on 13200. Alright, so we're going to go to COM1. And let's see. And put this to manual, I guess. Or number three. It has a number of channels. Manual. All right. So now we're going to enter AM, FM. Okay. So we're going to enter one, three, two, zero, zero, zero. Enter. And on. So now we've entered our airfield's uh, frequencies. We are ready to go with the communications. Finally, we are going to continue in with cranking the right engine, left engine. And we can see the numbers growing at 25%. We are going to set this to on. So basically, we're going to feed fuel into the engine. And you can see the engine as usual, um, well, spooling up. Uh, finally, we're going to move here. Well, while here they say that we should um, have the radar to operate, we're going to put it to standby. And we, this plane comes with an INS navigation system, which is the, similar to what the Mirage 2000C has. So an inertial navigation system. So the first step we need to do is to align it. 
since we are on the ground it has two positions ground and CV which is carrier so out at sea when we're at sea we're going to be using that we're going to set this to ground now uh, if you let's say would operate this from a land-based position then you would be of course aligning it with ground now, let's also turn on the oxygen system we don't really have int any intention of dying and the ra radar will be on standby for now uh, this is my habit usually on takeoff I turn it to operate now uh, finally let's press the FCS reset button so uh, why am I going to do that you can see the flight control surfaces are not exactly centered so if I press this and I'm gonna let it go Uh, okay. Cool. Finally, we're going to push the takeoff trim button. So what this does, it aligns our elevators uh, for the takeoff position. So finally, we're going to perform an FCS bit. So we're going to go here. And let's see, we have FCS... OSB. So we're going to press Y. And our screen says everything's to go. So power bit, MC1, MC2, FCSA, and FCSB, the control columns are good to go. Next, we need to uh, for test, we uh, cycle the refueling probes, speed brake, launch bar, and rest hook, pitot heat. And flap set to half. So let's start with the probe. The refueling probe should come up. All right. And in. And out again. And let's set it back to mute. All right. The next thing is the speed brake, which we're gonna take a look at here. I'm going to open it to full. There's the speed brake for the Hornet and then I'm going to close it. So that's a full set of cycle test. Next, let's see, Pito heat. Um, we're going to set it to on and then back to auto. Okay, we're going to check the arrestor hook. And then we're going to raise it. Finally, we are going to set our flaps to half. Then we're going to set our bingo fuel level which we kind of need to and we have these arrows here so let's put it to about 1200 I guess that should be fine uh, the radar altimeter should be set to all right 200 feet well we're just gonna use that Barometric airfield for the standby altimeter, I guess it's, let's check what it should be, 2955 in this case, so let's set it. We will also apparently this is not working. Apparently these switches are not working yet, but we would be setting our altimeter and send our altimeter source or attitude source. If 
apparently I had paused it by accident, so. And this should be 29.55, sorry about that. So let's put the altitude 2955 here. So this altimeter basically shows zero. Roughly there, I guess. All right. So we are started. Now we have to check if our INS is aligned. And it says OK. So we're going to proceed to set that to nav. We're going to go to the menu and bit. All right. Communications not ready. IFF and data link are not ready, and MIDs. Uh, those are not implemented yet, so we're going to leave them be. Uh, navigation. ILS is not set. Okay, we're going to put ILS. Channel. Well, I don't know which channel this is, but let's see if this has an ILS channel set. 1198, 108, 10890, but it has no channel, so I guess we'll leave it to channel 1. But let's also t set our TACAN to on 31, enter. Now, of course, we would at this point, I apologize for the sirens, uh, we would be preparing to take off. And let's also prepare our external lights. So let's put our position lights and formation to bright. Uh, that is all we need. APU, by the way, on the Hornet, shut it shuts itself down automatically. So that's a bit smart. Now we're going to set on the landing or taxi lights if we would like to taxi. Release the parking brake, and this is it. The Hornet is started up and ready to go. Um, the, all the main functionality has been covered according to this uh, quick guide and we're going to prepare to taxi so we will be setting this to the hsi which has one more thing that i forgot to do is activate the air bleeds uh the Aircraft does let you know if you have any problems here. All right, we should be on takeoff trim already. Position INS, we know we're on TACAM channel 31. We can go here and check different pages. So for example, we have here HSI bit movie checklists. Aircraft weight is fine. See, it has placeholder pages because they were not added yet. Fuel, we're doing fine. It still needs quite a bit of uh, UFC, okay. Engines, so here we can monitor the engines. We're going to put it like this for now. And here we are in taxi. Normally now we would be requesting permission for taxi from the... Uh, ATC, but we shall not be doing that. The scope of the video was going through the startup sequence of the Hornet, which I find quite intuitive and quite easy to to perform. Uh, if you would like to try this mo module, of course, it is available for purchase from Eagle Dynamics, along with the DCS itself, which is free, and other great aircraft and train pieces. Now here I'm using the Caucasus mostly because I like the map. But you have other great options, such as the Nevada Test Training Area, or Range. Uh, you have the Persian Gulf, which is the newest, hottest map. And if you like World War II, there's always Normandy. Now, the Caucasus is feasible for modern conflicts, like most of the others, while, of course, uh, the Normandy one is for World War II primarily. But any aircraft can use it, of course. But, well, this was it. We are absolutely ready to go. Thank you for watching and stepping in with me in the cockpit of the F-A-18C Hornet. 
and I'll see you in the next one. From the, in the next video, we will cover taxiing and takeoff all in one video. It shouldn't be very long. After that, we will uh, start to cover uh, landing, and then we'll continue with a series similar to the MiG-15 with navigation and so on. Again, thanks for watching, and I wish you a wonderful evening and a wonderful night. Come fly with me, and remember, look at the links below. If you like what you've seen, subscribe, and perhaps we'll get to learn one or two things together. Goodbye.